Okay, this video is, is Ivy League neuroscience a joke? Okay, so the first guy I'm gonna show you right here is Solomon Ash, and he did this psychologist experiment where he would bring a person into uh, a laboratory study setting. And then the experimenters would all be in confederate with uh, the guy running the study, Solomon Ash. And what he found was if everybody in the group would be in agreement that, let's say, this line was shorter than this line, something that's obviously not true, the psychological peer pressure of all the Confederates agreeing that this line was shorter than this line, or some other similar example of them all agreeing on something that was untrue, the majority of the study subjects would conform and say, oh, I guess you're right. And so what I'm saying is that's what happens in real life too. People think that's a no, that's a joke, but that's actually why lots of people get sick and die. That's also why people say, I was just following orders and do terrible, awful things. And so Solomon Ash, here's a quote from him. The tendency to conformity in our society is so strong, it is so strong, that reasonably intelligent and well-meaning young people are willing to say that white is black. This is a matter of concern. It raises questions about our ways of education and about the values that guide our conduct. And that's what I'm saying is, if some Ivy League researcher says, oh, you know, you need to, you know, give this medicine that doesn't work at all to the patients, I guarantee you 99% of doctors will do it, okay? Look what they do to children with attention deficit, okay? And now I'm, we're talking about nutrition as we do routinely here, and they've got, you know, this is the, the biggest, most famous Harvard School of Public Health, and their recommended diet is, you know, Right at its foundation are healthy fats and oils, like olive oil, canola oil. They even throw in their soy oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil. I mean, that's the foundation of their diet. That's insane. That's insane. It's the opposite of the Esselstyn diet. Okay, then what else do they say? They recommend a daily multivitamin, which is a stupid thing to do. You know, you're going to be taking excessive amounts of things you probably don't want, perhaps iron, perhaps copper, perhaps the wrong form of vitamin E, and who knows what else is in there, titanium dioxide, nanoparticles. Okay, then they recommend nuts and seeds, high-fat foods. There's a little controversy about nuts and seeds, but I don't think it's routinely a good idea. Then they recommend fish. I already told you, like the Jane Hightower book, you know, fish fog, that's like a very common reason that people become demented from all the mercury in fish. They recommend, you know, uh, poultry, uh, shrimp, <laughs> oysters. Bad idea. Seafood is terrible. It's full of really bad contaminants. I mean, it's a, in a garbage dump. The ocean, I'm sorry, but it's a sewer. Uh, then they say a little bit of alcohol is okay. <laughs> um, they recommend some dairy is okay. Uh and then here's here what they say. Watch out for refined grains like white rice and potatoes. Okay, well, I'm just letting you know, this is so incredibly stupid. If I taught a nutrition class, I would flunk a student for turning in this as their idea of a, turn, uh, a food pyramid. And so then, well, what does this mean in real life? In the pathology book, for example, autoimmune chapter, nothing on leaky gut. Cardiovascular pathophysiology books. From the, These are the Ivy League textbooks, okay? And these are even recent additions. In the chapters on hypertension, they just say it's unknown. Nothing to do with the fact that, you know, high-fat diets cause it in sodium and uric acid. Okay, and they don't go into the psychological stress stuff about it. Okay, and a coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis. No mention of the Esselstyn diet. No mention of the high-fat diets being the main issue. Uh, no mention of high-fat diets as the main cause of diabetes. Uh, what else? And they then, on top of that, they claim that inflammation is a major contributor to atherosclerosis, even though Esselstyn didn't have to do anything about inflammation. Pathologists who look at it under a microscope say it's not due to inflammation. They'll promote that so they can sell another drug. First of all, they always have to say there's a problem and their solution is to sell you another drug. Like I said, the child psychiatrists in the Ivy League schools, big time promoters of um, amphetamines, selling amphetamines to children, which would be illegal to sell on a street corner to an adult. They recommend you sell that to children in grade school for attention deficit. It's insane. Okay, and the big famous psychologist, Jordan Peterson, smart guy, he was an Ivy League uh, psychologist. He recommends carnivore diet for autoimmune disease and saying the opposite of what I would do. And he says that psychiatric drugs in general are good. Okay, go ahead, listen to him. Okay, these are the big, iconic, Ivy League level psychiatrists, psychologists, neurologists, nutrition experts. This is the kind of stuff they're saying. Okay, and then I, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to say their names out loud, but you can look this stuff up real fast if you're curious. The famous adult psychiatrist, now we're talking about adults, 
they're recommending for treatment of brain diseases, keto diet. And the keto diet can slow somebody's brain down, like in refractory epilepsy. And it might have, you know, a decent indication in refractory epilepsy, whereby all those side effects would be worth accepting if it means an alternative, let's say, brain surgery. But, you know, not for a regular person. There's another really famous adult psychiatrist out of the Ivy League, also recommending the ketogenic diet for, you know, psychological, psychiatric problems. Again, these will slow the brain down. My idea would be why not go through all the toxins that speed their brain up abnormally and the other psychological factors, lack of Christianity, atheism, all that stuff, and try to cure them without any drugs. Why not? Okay, uh, number three. Now, there's another uh, famous Ivy League psychiatrist now who's saying, oh, you don't have to do the keto diet. You can do a high-fat version of the Mediterranean diet. It's all completely stupid. They don't know what they're talking about. Uh, this one recommends lots of fish and olive oil and nuts, all the good fats and alcohol, little alcohol is okay. It's just completely stupid. And if you look at the famous traumatic brain injury experts from the Ivy League, they're recommending the Mediterranean diet. This is what I mean by like the Solomon Ash. They're all conforming to this Mediterranean, Mediterranean keto because they heard one of them say it and they assume the other one knows what they're talking about or they're just lying. I mean, it's pathetic. You go to the big neurology textbooks, one of them is like about 1,700 pages. There'll be 1 1.5 paragraphs on excitotoxicity in the context of, of, a, of the immediate post-stroke phase. It's ridiculous. That should be like a third of the book, okay? That's my theory is all about, you know, an expanded version of understanding excitotoxic excitotoxicity and calcium metabolism because that's what's making everybody demented. Nothing, nothing in the entire book. That's why I'm telling you a lot of these books that train the, not just the medical students and not even just the resident, but are used to train the fellows. They're totally stupid. They're totally stupid. That's what I mean too for the patient. You're on your own, Okay. These places, they either don't know what they're talking about or they don't care what they're talking about. As long as they make the drug company happy, they get big money, they get to write the standard of care, everybody has to follow it, and they're laughing all the way to the bank. Insurance company's happy, drug company's happy, the doctor at the Ivy League school getting promoted, getting famous is happy, but the patient gets screwed. Okay, that's what I'm trying to tell you. This healthcare system, it is not designed for you patients. You're, you're just a low-life pro. They don't care about you. They'll drug you with the, the, the worst drugs, the worst side effects, with no benefit. And they won't even think twice about it. It's the standard of care. They can't be sued. Why? Because some other Ivy League sold out to make a drug company happy and wrote the paper. Okay, and then uh, and a book from one of the Ivy Leagues recently about uh, multiple sclerosis and dementia and all this stuff. There's no mention of the nutrition doctors except for Swank. They have one paragraph on Swank, the great expert on multiple sclerosis, just to discredit him. Say, oh, you can't trust his diet, even though he has the best diets of anybody in the world on multiple sclerosis, including 34 years of follow-up. And then what I do, too, is I go to the, I go to the back of the book, and I look at the um, – I always look at the index. That's how I can tell very quickly if a book is good. So here I am looking at a book on you know neurodegenerative disorders, including autoimmune diseases and multiple sclerosis. There's no mention of calcium. How could you talk about the brain when everything a brain cell does is based on calcium? And there's about 50 things that mess up calcium metabolism in the brain. That's how I know the book is fake. Any book that talks about brain physiology doesn't talk about calcium. It's fake. Okay, then you go to glutamate. Glutamate is 90% of the brain neurotransmitters. My, uh, my webcam started, got screwed up a little bit by this. 90% of the brain neurotransmitters are due to... Um, are due to glutamate. And there's nothing on glutamate. How could you write a book about the brain and not talk about glutamate? Then I go to excitotoxicity. Excitotoxicity should be the main topic in the entire book if you're going to talk about serious neuropath pathophysiology. There's no mention of glutamate. Okay. Then I said, well, what about mitochondria? We've got to talk about mitochondrial injury. You need to know Martin Paul theory. You need to know peroxynitrite theory. You need to know about all the mitochondrial inhibitors. The, the word mitochondria is not in the index. And this is a big book. It's about 300-something pages. Okay. Then what about the NACA exchanger? Nothing about the sodium-calcium NACA exchanger. Nothing about circa inhibitors. That's what I'm trying to tell you. These books are meaningless. And why do books like this even exist? Because they've got to chump all the stupid proles so they can sell them drugs. Okay, so here's these guys pretending, yes, we're the Ivy League, we're the experts on neuroscience. Their books are stupider than the Shurzai book. Shurzai at least said a few useful things. This is irresponsible, it is incompetent, and it is dishonest. 
no mention of the most important basic things. Glutamate, calcium physiology, mitochondria, circa. I mean, how could you even talk about a neuron physiology if you don't talk about this basic stuff? All right, so anyways, I just tell you that so, you know, because the first step to a patient doing well is they have to understand they're on their own. You know, get what information you can from your doctors. If you're lucky, you'll find one that teaches you and tells you the truth. But in the end, you're going to have to decide. Luckily, most things are prevented just by eating the low-fat, vegan, starch-based, whole food, plant-based diet, preferably organic, and by avoiding toxins. So you got to learn some basic toxins. But anyways, I, I thought that was rather amusing. It ain't just one you know, goof off in the Ivy League. It's one after another, after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. After another.